Do you like history? Do you like gritty revenge assassination sort of thrillers? Then I have the book for you. Oathbound by Richard Cullen. Stick around to the end of this review for a really, really exciting announcement. You do not want to miss this, trust me. This is a review that I've been super, 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 super excited to share with you guys because it is my first book that I've reviewed not in the fantasy genre. Oh! Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm grooving. A little longer than a few minutes later. It is in the historical fiction genre. Yes! I am coming for you, Brothers Gwyn. No, don't worry. <laughs> They're really nice guys. Go follow them, Brothers Gwyn. I'll put the link down below. Now, this book, this was awesome. I mean, look at the tagline. My only master is vengeance. I mean, doesn't that just sound cool? And, and this book, this, this is the hipster of historical fiction. Now, something you may or may not know about me, probably not, is that I'm a really big history fan. I studied it at school and I really, really enjoyed it. And it's something that I've been wanting to get into. And recently I've been getting into the Last Kingdom series. I've been watching that with my dad, which has been really nice. I've, I've been watching the first season up to episode five. It's great. And so when I was offered the opportunity to review this book by Head of Zeus Books and Richard Cullen, of course, I absolutely took the chance and grabbed it with both hands. And I am so glad that I did. Let's take a little second. I'm going to go to my favourite history professor, Professor Matt, uh, to tell you a little bit more about the context of the Battle of Hastings. So, over to you, Professor Matt. Hello, I am your history teacher, and I'm going to be speaking this fast because all history teachers, as we know, speak uh, fast like this. Especially if you're Alan, Library of Alexandria, uh, when he gets very excited. No, I'm joking. I love you, Alan. Anyway, so, uh, I'm going to butcher this history, but here we go. So, um... 1066, there was a guy called Harold Godwinson, and he claimed to uh, have the throne of England. Uh, so Harold, uh, son of Godwin Godwinson, they had funny names back then. Well, they're not really that funny, you know, like, ha-ha funny. They're actually, like, like, just, they just named them, oh, Geoffrey, the son of Simon. <laughs> anyway, uh, tangent. So there's a guy called Harold Godwinson and he claimed the throne of England and then his brother, I think, betrayed him. There was also another Harold. Ugh, too many Harolds. Anyway, there's two Harolds. One's a Viking, I think, called Harold Hadrada, also known as Harold Sigurdsson. And he was coming across the sea because he's like, I want the king, I want the throne of England for myself. He thought he had a claim to the throne. And then you also have a guy called William Duke of Normandy, and he is a French noble, and he's like, no, I want the throne of England. They all clash, and uh, William lops off the head of Harold, son of Godwin, and William becomes the new tyrannical king of England, and so we're all descended from the Normans. Uh, and you should check all these facts, kids, because I'm not actually a history teacher, and... I probably got loads of things wrong. Anyway, back to you, Miggins. Well, I, I'm not sure how, uh, how how good of a history lesson that was, but thank you, Professor Matt. So now that you know a bit of the history, which I highly recommend you watch some some documentaries, look it up. That's that's sort of the context of this book. So, what is this book about? The champion of a dead king has nothing left to lose and nothing more to fear. Hastings, ten sixty six. Sterka the Dane stumbles, wounded and delirious, from the corpse-strewn battlefield of Senlac Hill. He has watched his king butchered at the hands of foreign knights, seen his countrymen defeated in battle, and he will not stop until there is a reckoning. Sterka embarks on a bloody quest to avenge his dead master, becoming an outlaw in the wilds and earning a fearsome reputation. When a Breton knight seeks to track down this fugitive and make his own name, he can little envisage the task he has set himself. For Sterka the Red Wolf, last surviving housecarl to King Harold Godwinson, will carve the story of his vengeance in Frankish flesh or die 
in the attempt. So that's the, the back of the blurb. I mean, like I said, it just sounds freaking awesome, right? So the way I kind of describe it is like, remember back in Marvel in phase two, a lot of the films in that phase, they were kind of like superhero films mixed with different genres. So for example, you had Winter Soldier, which was a Cold War style conspiracy thriller mixed in with a superhero movie. And that's one of my favorite movies. And so this, I would say is a historical fiction, but it's shrouded in this cloak of this revenge, gritty thriller. And it certainly was a thriller for me. You know, this is a very, very fast paced book. Our main character is called Sturker the Dane. What sold me on this book was it was about the Battle of Hastings, 1066. But interestingly enough, we actually start well before that uh, with Sturker and we kind of follow him from his early childhood when he is stolen from his home by, oh, it must be, uh, it's the Vikings, I think. And then he is rescued by King Harold Godmanson of England. And then he becomes immensely loyal to King Harold. And if you don't know what happened in the Battle of 1066, it's not really a spoiler since it's a very famous part of history. Essentially, he dies, and so Sturker goes on this quest for vengeance to defeat the Frankish men that are coming to take his land, which has become now his homeland, because obviously he's a Dane, but he's in England, and so it's really interesting that he kind of struggles with these two identities of himself, that he's a Dane, but also, you know, he's loyal to his king, and, and this series as a whole, really, is, is all about his quest for vengeance. But one thing that I will say is don't go into it like I did with the mindset that it's about 1066. So I was imagining it was a like sort of a retelling of the events of the kind of political manoeuvring of, of each of the different uh, factions and leading up to this culminating in this epic battle, the Battle of Hastings, the most famous battle in British history, or one of them, because you've also got Dunkirk. But actually, it wasn't like that, and it took a little while to get my head wrapped around that, because it is all about Sturker and his quest, his bloodthirstiness for Frankish blood uh, to avenge his fallen king. And once I got myself in that mindset that, that the history is merely the surrounding framework of this book and actually the meaty heart of this story is all about this this revenge quest then I really sort of got into it because I understood what the story was about but that doesn't mean that there isn't action in this there is plenty plenty of brutal action and actually one of the things that I picked up on is, is that Richard Cullen is a really good at writing motivational battle speeches. We only get a little snippet here, but for what I got, I was like, yes, my king and my liege, you know? And then there's kind of like the big overarching figure of William, Duke of Normandy, boo. And, and, and he's kind of in the background for quite a lot of it. But then you really have this guy called Ronan who's kind of like the standing antagonist. He's this weaselly little pathetic Breton knight. And he's, yeah, like I say, very weaselly, very, not a pantomime villain, because there is a richness, there is a depth to him. And that's something that Richard Cullen does really well is that you do feel for him. There, there is a, a heart to his story, uh, an emotional tinge that, that makes you uh, feel for what he's gone through that's turned him into this monster but also he is monstrous and you know Richard does not shy away from that and so it, it kind of becomes this sort of chase between Sturka and Ronan and there's some other really fascinating characters too that round it out but it, it kind of it, it works in sort of little vignettes so like I say it, it starts off really well before 1066 at the beginning of Sturka's life, where he is taken as a young child away from his family, away from his homeland, and then it, it spans all the way to beyond 1066. And, and so that was, I thought, it was a very clever sort of structure, but also there was a sense for me, one of the few drawbacks for me was that it felt very bitty at times. And so it, it did take a little bit to get into it because of that feeling of sort of it, it's broken up it, 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 can, it can jump months and so it did make it sort of a little bit jarring at times but once you got into it and you got through to the end of the book you know it really didn't make 
a difference particularly to me uh, and it really helped keep that fast pace going so I mean this it's not a short book it's 300 it's 400 pages but you know it, it's really that because you're only seeing little sections from the the lives of these characters it is very very fast paced everything develops very very quickly and, and so there's like I say there's the drawbacks in that you don't always get that emotional moment because because it is so fast paced and you're always just constantly moving on moving on but also for those of you that like a really fast paced book this will be one for you you don't even need to be a history fan you know this is just a good old-fashioned revenge thriller so absolutely go check out this book this is the first book in richard cullen's series the second book shield breaker is out now i'm about to read that now for my exciting announcement they gave me a copy to give away well they sent me an extra copy and i i asked do you want me to send it back or kind of do a giveaway they were like sure you can give it away so how do you win a fabulous copy of this new book by Richard Cullen? All you've got to do is subscribe to my channel, like this video, and comment down below. What is your favourite era of history, or just what's your favourite part of history? Let's uh, start some conversations. I love history, and you know, it's something I want to talk about more on this channel and get more into historical fiction. So tell me, what, what's your favourite part of history, or what's your favourite historical fiction that you have read thus far? And I will pick a winner on, let's choose a month later from when I'm filming this, on the 23rd of September, which gives me enough time to edit this and get this out. So, please like, subscribe, comment down below, what's your favourite area of history, or what's your favourite historical fiction, and I will pick a winner on the 23rd of September, and send it to you, UK only, UK only, unfortunately, because I don't have money to send this to America. I'm really sorry. But if you're in the UK and you like historical fiction, you're in for a treat. So thank you for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know down below as well. Do you like historical fiction? Would you like me to cover it more? Is there another genre you'd like me to try? You know, uh, just anything, uh, any feedback would be really helpful. I hope you like this video. Please like, subscribe. All the links are down below to all the channels and uh, I'll put a link down to the book so you can get it on Amazon or any good bookstore retailer. Until next time, see you later guys.